What's up, Vite fans? Welcome back to K with Kyle. I'm your host, Kyle. Today we'll be doing a recap of UFC 260, Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou, as well as a forecast of UFC Fight Night, Marvin Vittori versus Kevin Holland. I'm just going to do a real quick recap um, because it's been a couple weeks now since we had a week off from the UFC. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The prelims for UFC 260, I don't know what it was about them. They were just a little lackluster. Um, there was an Abu Bakar Nurmagomedov fight, and he did pretty well. The very first fight between Abu Azatar and Mark Andre Berriolt was pretty good and ended with the finish. Um, besides that, uh, I don't know what it was about the, the um, a lot of the betters online had expected. Oleg Zujek versus Bukaskis to be a fight that didn't go to decision, but it ended up going to decision. And there just wasn't a lot of standout performances. Alonzo Menafield got a submission, so that was pretty good. But starting off the main card, we had Kamaworthy versus Jamie Malarkey. It was quick work for Malarkey. Uh, he got it done in 46 seconds. He won by TKO. He just landed a really heavy left hook coming in, dropped Worthy. And in the next one was at women's flyweight, Jillian Robertson versus Miranda Maverick. Miranda Maverick just overpowered her, just had the, such an advantage on the feet. And when it would go to the ground, Robertson's grappling looked really good. She had her in a lot of trouble many times, but Maverick was able to fight her way out of bad spots and continue with the offense and even though she got dominated most of round two some of the judges scored it all three rounds for Miranda Maverick so she won by unanimous decision next at bantamweight we had Sean O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida O'Malley was throwing a lot of kicks he looked really good he was checking leg kicks it was definitely scary at times when he was taking leg kicks is it going to be a repeat of the Cheeto Vera fight where he got taken out early just from low leg kicks even though in Sean O'Malley's own mind he's undefeated mentally and that was an anomaly and just a fight accident and not an actually a loss but it was quick work uh, a short left dropped Almeida in round three and follow up knocked him out so uh, Sean O'Malley won by KO in a spectacular victory in that one Next, in the co-main event at Welterweight, we had Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. Tyron definitely came out strong, a lot stronger than his last previous fights, and he was attempting to win a round, even though he didn't exactly. He got caught, uh, he got rocked really bad, he was really wobbly on his feet, and Vicente Luque just landed heavy shots and then ended up actually finishing by submission. It looked like it was going to be a TKO, but Luque finished it by submission. So that was Woodley's fourth straight loss. But he actually looked a lot better in this one than in his previous outings. But nevertheless, Vicente Luque is a beast and someone to look out for at welterweight. He'll get another big fight. And I can't wait to see who he's matched up with next. And our heavyweight for the heavyweight championship, we had the rematch between Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou. Uh, Ngannou came out really patient. He wasn't just throwing wildly. Stipe went for a takedown, which had a lot of success in their first fight, and Ngannou stuffed it, had really good takedown defense. Um, Stipe was getting pounded on, but had a pretty good chin in round one. The smaller octagon was playing a factor in Stipe's ability to get away from Francis. And in the round two, a straight left coming in dropped Stipe. Uh, Francis continues to rain blows. Stipe gets back up. He lands one punch, and then he thinks he has Francis hurt, so he rushes forward. And then a real short left hook from Francis caught him right on the chin and knocked him out. So it was a dominant performance by Francis. It's surprising someone can improve that much in between fights. I definitely didn't predict this. I had Miocic. Actually, in Kyle's fight picks, I had comma worthy as well as Miocic. And then I had the other winners, Miranda Maverick, Sean O'Malley, and Vicente Luque. So I went three for five in my picks. 
So next, let's go ahead and forecast the upcoming Saturday night. Actually, Saturday afternoon. It's a early card, and so mark your calendars for that. So we'll be talking about Marvin Vittori versus Kevin Holland. And it originally had six fights on the main card, but a Kyle Dockhouse fight against an undefeated guy from the Contender Series. That fell off because of COVID restrictions. So we're down to five fights, but starting off the main card at welterweight, we have Mike Perry versus Daniel Rodriguez. Both fighters are coming off of a decision loss. Perry is 14-7 and seven professionally, and Rodriguez is 13-2 and two professionally. Uh, Rodriguez has three wins in his last four fights in the UFC, and Perry has two wins in his last five fights. I think they have similar styles, wanting to stand and trade blows. I think I'm going to pick the slight favorite, Daniel Rodriguez. Next up at women's strawweight, we have Mackenzie Dern versus Nina Ansarov. Uh, both fighters have four wins in their last five fights. Dern has excellent submission skills, but I think Ansaroff will be able to avoid them. I would bet the over 2.5 rounds. I also think Ansaroff by decision is a pretty good bet. Um, Ansaroff's only loss is coming most recently as a unanimous decision loss to Tatiana Suarez. Mackenzie Dern's only loss in her last five was against Amanda Hebus by unanimous decision. So I'm picking the slight favorite, Nina Ansaroff, just because I think she's good enough to prevent the submission and well-rounded enough to dominate in the other aspects of the fight. Moving on, at middleweight, we have Smiling Sam Alvey versus the Cuban Missile Crisis, Julian Marquez. Alvey was on a four-fight loss streak before he had a draw with Da Eun Jung. Marquez has two submission wins in his three UFC fights. Alvey was fighting light heavyweights, so maybe at middleweight this might be better for him. This fight's at middleweight. And although Alvey is a real veteran with a record of 33, 14, and one draw and one no contest, I think I'm going to pick the favorite, Julian Marquez. At in our co-main event at Featherweight, we have Arnold Allen versus Sodiq Youssef. Both fighters are undefeated in their UFC bouts. Youssef has won four straight after a win and a contract earned on Dana White's Contender Series. Allen has five wins in his last five fights. I think he's on a seven-fight win streak. I expect this fight to be explosive, but after saying that, it'll probably go to decision. I think I'm going to pick the slight underdog, Arnold Allen. And in our main event at middleweight, we have Marvin Vittori versus the short notice replacement, Kevin Holland. Originally, it was Marvin Vittori versus Darren Till, and Darren Till had to be pulled because of a collarbone injury. I think maybe his collarbone was broke in training. So in this fight, Holland was on a five-fight win streak in 2020. Most recently, he lost a unanimous decision against Derek Brunson that many kind of lost respect for Holland at how bad his wrestling takedown defense was and being on Joe Rogan's podcast and saying that he doesn't train wrestling is just a real bad look to then get dominated by Derek Brunson the way he did. Uh, Dana White even couldn't finish the fight. He said in the third round and the fifth round, I'll catch you in the back and just left peaced out early. Uh, Marvin Vittori's last loss was a split decision with Israel Adesanya. So that was a close fight. And since then he's won four in a row. Holland has a reach advantage in almost every fight. Vittori is more durable. He's never been knocked out and has fought the bigger names. If it stays on the feet, Holland has a chance. But I'm picking the heavy favorite, Marvin Vittori. Kyle's Fight Picks. In Kyle's Fight Picks, I have Daniel Rodriguez, Nina Ansarov, Julian Marquez, Arnold Allen, and Marvin Vittori. Catch us next week as we recap this fight night and forecast the upcoming UFC event. 
and which is slipping my mind at the moment. I don't know what it is, but I will have an episode for you that is both a recap and a forecast. So please subscribe so you never miss our timely content. And until next time, fight fans, peace.